morning, Milton Bible Church. It's great to see everybody here this morning. August 21st, we are getting towards the end of our summer, but what a beautiful uh, morning. What a great day for church. Um, listen, if you're here this morning and uh, as you're worshiping, as you're praying, as you're hearing from God, um, God lays something on your heart. There's a word or a picture or a scripture that you believe is for the church. Uh, we practice something here we call making room for God. And uh, we'd ask that you would come and just meet with me. I'll be sitting over here, um, share uh, what it is God's speaking. And um, if it's for the congregation, we'd love to have you share that. And in that vein, actually, um, I actually have a, a passage and an image that I think is for us today. So um, last uh, night, I don't know if any of you were woken up by thunder and lightning and rain. Did, did anyone actually get woken up by that? Who, who woke up? Okay, who slept right through it? You're like, what are you talking about? Okay, most of you. Okay. So I woke up, and uh, I, I saw this big flash, and I thought, wow, thunder, lightning, rain. And, you know, we haven't had a lot of rain, so I was very happy. I had just planted a few plants last week, and I wanted them to catch, and I thought, this is so good. Rain is good for the grass. It's good for these plants I planted. I thought, I'm just going to sneak out and peek and see what's going on. So I peeked in the backyard, and my tree I just planted was, like, blowing like this in the wind. And I was like, oh, no, I hate, I hate thunder and rain and lightning now. It's the worst, right? But um, I'm reminded uh, as, we, as we engage with the Lord today that in many ways God wants to pour down in our hearts, right? And um, it's good for us. Ultimately, it's good. This morning I, I woke up and I looked at the tree and it was fine. But as I was praying on this kind of picture and image, and I don't, I'm, normally I'm the sleep through it person, um, I came across this passage, Isaiah 45, 8. Shower, O heavens, from above, and let the clouds rain down righteousness. Let the earth open that salvation and righteousness may bear fruit. Let the earth cause them both to sprout. I, the Lord, have created it. I, the Lord, have created it. It's my prayer for us this morning as we engage uh, with God, that he would pour on our hearts and on our lives, that salvation and righteousness would spring up within us. And whether it's you're just the dry grass that needs the rain, or whether you're the one that's blowing sideways and going, oh my goodness, this is crazy, I believe that God wants to pour down his goodness, his mercy, and his love on you today. We're going to keep on worshiping this morning. Uh, let's hear from God today, church.
promises are yes and amen. Beautiful Savior, you have brought me near. You pulled me from the ashes, you have broken every curse. Blessed Redeemer, you have set this captive free. Lord, I can't help but sing. Faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. Faithful Your promises are yes and amen. Faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. Faithful you are. And all your promises are yes and amen. Our yes and amen. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. I will. is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is your faithfulness. fills me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived
Yes, Lord. So would you go before us, God? Would you be our vision, Lord? Would you show us where we need to go as a church? Would you show each of us where we need to go individually in our lives, God? Um, may we not be the vision of our lives, but may you be the vision of our life, Lord, the one leading us um, to all the great things you have in store. It's in your name we pray this morning, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and grab a seat this morning, folks. We're so glad all of you are with us today. Um, one of the things we do here at Milton Bible Church is we give to the kingdom. And um, that can come in several ways, but specifically time, talent, and treasure is often ways I think of, of giving to God's work. So we invite you to consider how could you give your time and your talent in the ministry season ahead. There's lots of opportunities available um, to give your time and energy to. And there'll be many that we'll be sharing in the weeks to come as we gear up for the fall. Um, but we also ask you to consider um, your, your treasure. What are you giving to God in terms of your tithe and your offering? And so uh, right now we aren't passing, passing the offering plate around. But you can give at our giving stations um, as you leave today. You can give online. Um, we even have the recurring giving online, which I find especially handy as a forgetful person. So uh, consider how you can give to God's work. And one of the blessings of being able to give to ministry is we're able to continue to grow and do ministry. And one of the things that we're able to do uh, because of your giving is we've been able to hire a full-time family ministries director for the years to come. And so we have hired Tori Cochran. Um, and many of you would know Tori because she has been our part-time Momentum Youth Director this year. And she's coming on. She's going to be bringing leadership to Momentum Youth, to Power Kids, and she's going to be providing uh, a point contact for a young adult leadership team. So we're super excited about this. Uh, Tori's not with us today because she is recuperating from surgery. Um, so we can be praying for that. But let's give Tori a big round of applause. Yes. Very, very awesome. And so I just invite you to be uh, praying for Tori for a couple things. One, as she steps into this role, um, because these are really key pieces of our church, and she's so excited for it, but we want to lift her up and sustain her in prayer. And we also want to lift her up because of uh, the recovery from her surgery. I understand it's going well, um, and she's a goal-oriented person, so she's going to keep uh, pushing herself forward. But we just ask uh, that the Lord would heal her quickly. And uh, we're excited to have her joining the team. Um, a couple other things you should be aware of. We have a young adult, young adult meet and greet happening next Sunday right after the church, um, hanging out in the patio area. If you're a young adult or you consider yourself a young adult, so what is a young adult anyway, right? So I always say it's like 18 to 20-something, maybe 30-something. I don't know. But anyhow, if you consider yourself a young adult, Hang out after church next week. We would love to see you getting connected with our young adult community here at Milton Bible Church. Uh, another thing that I just want to put on your radar at this point is if you are new to the church, uh, whether that's over the summer or even in the past year, and you're getting to know the church, and listen, they tell us that most visitors come to church in the summertime. Did you know that? Very interesting, fun fact. But if that's you, or if you came last summer, but you still consider yourself new, that's okay too. Uh, we'd love for you to get to know the church. So we have on September, I want to get the state right, Sunday, September 18th, right after church, uh, a thing called Hang Loose with the Leaders. It's an opportunity to hang loose with the leaders of Milton Bible Church. I love it when a name of an event describes it exactly. You're like, I know exactly what this is. I'm hanging loose with leaders. So you get to come and you get to find out more about Milton Bible Church, what we're all about, ask questions, um, and determine is this the church that God's called you to and how can you continue to get involved and join us in all the things God's calling us to. So just put that on your radar. You can sign up on the church website, miltonbiblechurch.ca. Um, last but not least, I have a, uh, an announcement to make, but I'm going to ask you to turn your attention to the screens for this announcement. Here we go. Hey, Milton Bible Church, Mark Strickland here, inviting you to come on out right here at Fairhavens with Milton Bible Church, September 23rd to 25th. 
2022, Fairhaven's is totally loaded with all the best amenities any church family like ours could possibly need. Nature trails, bike trails, gaga ball, pickleball, we got it all. Amazing accommodations, five full meals, and this place is packing with fun for everyone. We're pumping fuel for your soul this weekend with awesome worship and Bible teaching sessions. Get ready to grow! I'll personally be painting a picture towards the future of Milton Bible Church, challenging you to imagine what God has in store for us. You're not gonna believe it. We're offering the friends and family discount. This retreat is completely free. We must be losing our minds. You get a retreat and you get a retreat. A retreat for everybody. So here's what you have to do. Head on over to MiltonBibleChurch.ca and register yourself and your family today. That's www.MiltonBibleChurch.ca to sign up Friday, September 23rd to Sunday, September 25th, completely free. Looking forward to seeing you and your fam at the church event of the year, NBC Weekend Away at Fair Havens. Be there! Not, I'm not sure if that was as cringy for you to watch as it was for me, but uh, I, don't, I don't know how I get talked into doing these things, but alas, that's what happened. So, but we are so excited about the Weekend Away retreat coming up September 23rd to 25th, and we do want to invite and challenge every single one of you to sign up. Uh, we do invite everybody in the church family to come, and we, we have this as free. There is a special offering you can give towards that, but we don't want the financial piece to be a uh, uh, part for why someone decides not to come. So please sign up. We already have over 150 of us signed up, and we know that there is more to come. It's going to be an incredible weekend, and I really have a sense, you know, as I'm leaning in and, and praying about uh, what God would have for this weekend, what God would have for the future, that it's really going to be a weekend where we reflect on um, recharging. You know, as we come out of uh, a really intense couple years of COVID and whatnot, um, how are we recharging for what God has for each one of us individually? And how as a church are we recharging, refueling, rethinking about what God will have for our future? And so you don't want to miss that. You want to be a part of that. It's going to be an exciting time. Uh, especially if, again, you're newer to the church, it's going to be just that opportunity to really get to know people, to get plugged in, get connected. And it's exciting to see what God will do. So make sure you sign up for the weekend away. It's going to be awesome. Um, and I'll be there, as you can see, I'll be there. I might even have, you know, a purple shirt and a filter over me as I speak and uh, some cheesy uh, music playing throughout the week. No, I won't do that. So that was just for fun. All right, well, it's that time in our service where we are going to be sending our kids off to their Power Kids program. Let me pray for you kids and uh, teachers who are leading this morning, and then you can head out. Uh, Father God, we thank you, Lord, for the children that are with us this summer, God. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that um, the children's rooms are full, Lord, that uh, kids are here, they're learning about you, and they're learning about especially what you did for us, Jesus, dying on the cross for our sin. Um, and just what you mean for us in our lives, Lord. I pray for each kid today that they would be growing in their faith, they'd be hearing your word, Lord. And I thank you for each teacher, uh, each leader who's in rooms this morning, whether they're loving on the babies and the toddlers or they're teaching the lessons today, God. I pray that you would bless each one of them. God, would you go before them today? In your name we pray, amen. All right, leaders, teachers, kids, you can head out to your Power Kids program. And this morning, we have Pastor Jim, who will be coming up in just a moment to continue in our One Another series. And just as he's coming up, I want to invite you to just say hello to a couple people around you, give a wave, a fist bump, shake of the hands, whatever, say hi, and we'll be into our message in just a minute. Well, let me say good morning. Good morning as you're saying good morning to one another. Uh, good morning. It's great to be together today. As Pastor Mark said, we'll be continuing our sermon series on one another. Uh, next week, he'll be coming, and uh, over the next two weeks, he'll be finishing up the sermon series on the tulip, five points of Calvinism, that uh, I'm sure you are very interested in. Um, and it'll be great to, to bring that uh, to you folks. And uh, But this morning, we want to 
continue our series on one another. Do you know there's over 60 times in the New Testament where we are commanded to get involved with one another, to support one another, encourage one another, love on one another, lift up one another, um, <clears throat> care for one another, comfort one another, encourage one another, forgive one another. Bear one another's burdens is what we're going to look at today. There's so many ways, over 100 in the entire Bible, that we are called to get actively involved in one another's lives as the people of God and in our community. And so, you know what, I'll, I'll be honest with you, this morning I really think that God wants to encourage us. I really do. I really believe that he wants to come alongside us. I love the songs that were picked this morning um, because they were songs of God's great power and his majesty and his ministry in our lives. And I loved what Jenny brought, you know, the reality that God is running after us, but we've got to turn and stop. And we've got to embrace um, him and the love he has for us. We can't just be running and running. So... I'm excited this morning, and I really believe with all my heart that God has something special for each one of us. You know, <clears throat> coming out of the pandemic, as Mark talked about, um, which still seems to loom over many people, especially if you go through Pearson Airport, uh, in an unhealthy way, you know, there's been a lot of fallout. And over the past, even the past few weeks, I've spoken to people who, in their business, they aren't yet at pre-pandemic levels because, quite frankly, they can't find people to work for them. Other people have lost their businesses completely. Some people are in tremendous, you know, financial difficulties. And even we got a call this week about someone who wasn't able to pay, you know, their hydro bill. Others we know have lost loved ones. And in very difficult and uh, tragic ways. Others are, you know, struggling emotionally. And families, marital relationships have had incredible stress upon them. And all of this coming out of the pandemic, you know, I could go on and on. The scripture says of Jesus in Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. When Jesus saw the masses and he saw the struggles and he saw the burdens and he saw the difficulties, he wept. But he didn't just feel bad. He actually got involved. See, compassion is a call to action. It's a call to getting involved. So what did Christ do? He fed the hungry. He healed the sick. He preached salvation to those who were far from God and invited them into relationship with God. And he died for them and bore their sins so that they might have life and life eternal. He got involved. He got involved. And getting involved... Like these one another passages, it's so important. You know, when we forgive one another, when we love one another, when we bear one another's burdens, when we encourage one another, when we be hospitable to one another and simply even invite one another out for coffee. All these one another passages are commands. They're commands. They're not, oh, that's really nice, so oh, I feel really bad. No. They're calls to action. And so I want to invite you to another call to action this day. And one of my favorite books of the Bible was what, it's the first book I ever exegeted in the Greek from cover to cover. And when I came upon Galatians chapter 6, I just fell in love with this exhortation uh, of the Apostle Paul as he sums up his letter to the Galatians. So if you have a Bible, I certainly would encourage you to open it or on your device to Galatians chapter 6. I'll have it up on the screen as well. And we're going to look at verses 1 to 5 this morning. It says this, 
Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself, but let each one of you Let each one of you look to his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor, for each will have to bear his own load. Let's pray together before we get into this passage. Father, uh, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are running after us even today, and that it's your goodness that you desire to give us. You desire to be image bearers of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And so, Lord, we pray that you would send your Holy Spirit and you would teach us, that you would teach us from your word, that you would teach us to rightly divide the word of truth in such a way that we are moved by it. And so, Lord, we thank you We thank you for who you are. We thank you for the life that you've called us to. And we ask for your blessing upon our time together. We submit our hearts to you now in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, one of the first things we see in this passage is that there are two kinds of burdens. There are two kinds of burdens, and I want to show them to you. First of all, They're burdens that we need to help others carry. In verse 2, it says, bear one another's burdens. Bear one another's burdens. The second kind of burden are burdens that we need to carry alone. We need to carry them, and God's given them to us to teach us. In verse 5, it says, for each will have to bear his own load. So there's some burdens that we carry on our own. And there's some burdens that we need to carry. But you know what? There are other burdens that we simply cannot carry by ourselves. There's some other burdens that we need help to carry. We need our brothers and sisters in Christ to help us to carry them. I want you to know the context of this passage. In Galatians chapter 1, or 6 verse 1, it says this. It says, if anyone is caught in any transgression... You who are spiritual should restore them. Now, the word transgression is the same word we use for sin. If any of you is caught in any kind of sin. So the picture really here is someone who's fallen, someone who's blown it, someone who's, you know, who, who, who's caught by something. And, uh, and sometimes, you know, Sometimes, you know, I, I've been over to Maplehurst many times, in, you know, and talked to guys in the jail there. And um, sometimes there are things you get caught for that you did something wrong. And sometimes there are things you get caught up in that you really, things just kind of spiraled out of control. And you know what? There are different ways that we get caught but it ends up in a bad place. And you know what Paul says? I don't care what happened. I don't care why it happened. If anyone is caught in any transgression, any time, anywhere, any place, for any reason, you who are spiritual, you feel you've grown to a certain level in Christ, you, and maybe he's saying that a little tongue-in-cheek, you who think you're spiritual... Or maybe you who are led by the Spirit, you restore them. Come on. What he's saying is, come on, church. Come on. It's you I'm giving a ministry of reconciliation to. It's you I want to get involved. That's the context here. The context here is no matter what or why or how, It doesn't matter what happened, whether it was their fault, whether they got caught up in it. Help them, restore them, help them carry that burden. 
Let, let's just talk about this, the reality of burdens. If anyone is caught in any transgression, you know what? Listen up, the truth is everyone has a burden. And all of us carry burdens. And some of us, our burdens can be seen and some they can't be seen. And do you know what a burden is? A burden is kind of anything that you're carrying that is heavy. It can be emotional, it can be financial, it can be relational, it can be family related, it can be at work, it could be on your street, it can be medical, it could be psychological, it could be physical. Listen, man, it could be your car breaking down on the side of the road, a parent in a nursing home. It could be running out of money before you run out of month. It can be loneliness or extreme loneliness. It can be marital issues. It can be teenage rebellion. All of these things weigh us down. And you know what? It takes many forms and many shapes, but it is real. You know, I think of our young grandson, born just one week and two days ago. And I was holding him in my arms yesterday and just kind of rocking him and he's sleeping. And, you know, what a life. Eat, sleep, get hugged all day. <laughs> it's a good deal. <laughs> and, you know, I, I don't know what, what's ahead for him. You know, I don't know what things are in store for his little heart and for his little life and what burdens he one day may carry. And it causes my heart to pray for him and to pray for God's grace and his goodness and his love to be lavished upon his little life. Burdens can take many forms and many shapes, but burdens are very real. Let me tell you what burdens bring. Burdens bring th three things. First of all, they bring a feeling of powerlessness. Have you ever sat there and you ever been involved in something and you're weighed down by a burden and you just say, man, I just don't have the strength to do this. I just can't get past this. I just don't know what to do. I just feel like I'm paralyzed and I just don't have the ability to pick this up. You see, burdens can give us a feeling of being powerless, but they also can bring a feeling of vulnerability. When you're so weighed down by something that it keeps you up at night, that you're not sleeping, that things are not going well, and someone comes to you and they want to tell you their problem and you say to them, listen, man, right now there's a straw that could break this camel's back. And I don't think I can hear one thing. So please don't tell me about it because I just feel so vulnerable right now. I just can't, I, I just can't do this. And then there's a feeling of shame. There's a feeling of shame, whether it's your fault or whether it isn't. Whether it's your fault, whether you've done something wrong, whether you've, you know, whether the burden is your fault or whether it's been imposed upon you, you still feel guilty about it, don't you? I remember when I was a, a young Christian, very, you know, I was like 20 years old. I hadn't been a Christian very long. And, and I went with a church that wasn't my own church. A friend of mine who went to another church invited me to what they call their college and career canoe camp. And it was like the grades 11 and 12 and they're college age students. And uh, we went on this canoe, uh, canoe trip in Algonquin Park. And I was really blessed. I had a six man tent. So we had six guys sleeping in it. We called it Hotel Algonquin. And uh, it, it was a lot of fun. We had just a great time. And at night we gathered around the campfire, we sang songs, people read the word of God, devotionals, people prayed together, we, you know, we canoed, you know, every day portaged. It was just a wonderful time. And I'll never forget, on the way home on the bus, there was a, a teenage girl, people, you know, they're, it's a long way from London to Algonquin Park, like five hour trips. So people are bopping back and forth and chatting away. And, and I'm, you know, I'm new, I'm getting to know people. And, and this girl, she's 18 years old and she, she came and sat beside me and she said, you know, man, 
I really enjoyed getting to know you, Jim. It was absolutely wonderful to, you know, to get to know you. And um, she said, because I'd heard some things about you that weren't very good. And you know what I said to her? I said, well, probably the things you heard about me probably were true. (laughs) They could very well have been true. And there's a lot of things in my past that I'm not very proud of. But you know, I just want to walk one day with the Lord and allow him to lead me. And she was like, yeah, I can deal with that. That's a great answer. <laughs> and uh, then she asked if she could become my prayer partner. And I'm like, okay, hold on. This is going too far. <laughs> Her dad was very appreciative that I handled it that way. Um, you know, there's some things in our past that, some things even in our present, some things that happen, some things that are our fault and some things that aren't our fault. And sometimes they just bring a sense of shame, don't they? And we carry that and it becomes a burden. So let me ask you something. Do you carry a burden today? Do you carry a burden today? And is it time to let somebody else come alongside and help you carry that burden? Or maybe the truth is you know someone who's carrying a burden and it's time you came alongside them. And you helped them bear their burden. Well, let's talk about how to be a burden bearer. In verse 1 it says this, You who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. So you who are spiritual, those who would call themselves mature in Christ, led by the Spirit, um, just reach a certain level of maturity, this is what I want you to do. Three things I think this passage teaches us. First of all, have a plan. Have a plan. And the plan is always to restore people. The plan is always a plan of restoration. You who are spiritual, restore him or her. Bring them back to the Lord is what the plan always is. It's always the goal. It's always the purpose. It's always our job to point people to Christ. The second thing is to seek to understand the burden that they carry. Seek to understand the burden that they carry. You're to restore them in a spirit of gentleness, not judgment, but gentleness. Coming alongside, seeking to understand. I don't know how many times I've been in situations where people tell me their medical you know, difficulties or people tell me, you know, what they're, they're, you know, going through emotionally. And I honestly, like, I don't know what they're talking about. I go home, I Google it. Like, I want to understand what the burdens are that people are carrying. Because they tell me some kind of medical term and I have no idea what it means. So I want to research it so that when I get together with them again... I can actually speak intelligently to help them lift their burdens up. Try to understand what they're doing in a spirit of gentleness. Listen, man, there is no place in the church for judgment. We have a judge. And I am so thankful that the one who judges is the one who died for me. And I am not your judge, and you are not my judge. My responsibility is to help you (laughs) rise up and bear up the burdens that are in your life. And then the last thing is this. Don't don't try and replace Jesus. You're not the fix-it person. The scripture says, keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Understand this, it's Jesus who is the ultimate burden bearer. It's Jesus who is the one 
who is the one we point to, the one, you know, if you're spiritual, you know, as the scripture says, if you're a church leader, I, you know what, I love my job because I only have one job, and you know what that is? Point to Jesus. <laughs> point to Jesus. Because he is, he is the author, he's the sustainer, and he is the finisher of our faith. And it is through him that we have life. And so we always point people to Christ. We always do. And don't, so don't try and take the place of Jesus. But watch yourself, lest you be tempted as well. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29, Jesus said, Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Are you looking for rest for that burden? Are you looking for the place to put, put that burden down that's going to be strong enough to bear it? And the picture here is, you know, take my yoke upon you. And it's an Old Testament agrarian society in which a large ox would be, uh, would be paired with a smaller ox. And the yoke would be put upon the large ox and a yoke would be put upon a small ox. And the large ox would teach the small ox how to plow a field. And the large ox would go along and the small ox would go along beside him. And the small ox would say, man, is this ever heavy. And the large ox would say, what are you complaining about, dude? I'm doing most of the work. And what Jesus is saying is this, let me, let me, let me carry the heavy stuff. Let me carry, the, let me do the heavy lifting. Let me be the one that is going to give you rest and teach you how to walk this journey. Psalm 55, verse 22 says, Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. All right, quick review. So far, we've looked that burdens are real. Sometimes they're of our own making, and sometimes we get caught up in them. They can make us powerless, vulnerable, and leave us with a sense of shame. But burdens can also be lifted, and we're to have a plan when we get involved in people's lives, a plan of restoration, seeking to understand the burden they carry, not trying to replace Jesus as the ultimate burden bearer. Now lastly, let's look at this, the blessing of bearing burdens. The blessing is that we would fulfill the law of Christ. So as we bear one another's burdens, we fulfill the law of Christ. And some of your Bible scholars are saying, listen, I'm not under law, I'm under grace. Like, what is the law of Christ? We know the scripture says that Jesus came not to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. So what is the law of Christ? Well, we started our sermon series with this passage. John 13, 34 and 35 where Jesus says, a new command I give to you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. And by this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And so, love does four things. When we begin to bear one another's burdens, it demonstrates the love of God. You know, it was very interesting. That was said and prayed this morning, even before I got up here. By this shall all men that you are God's children because you pick up the heavy stuff for others. Because you carry the weight, because you jump in, because you get involved, because you are called to action and you live a life of action. You're not simply watching the show and leaving. Secondly, it brings deliverance. Let me say this. Can I have everybody's attention? Would you guys just look at me just for a moment? Can you look at me just for a moment? God does not want you to walk in bondage and shame. He has no desire for you to be wearing the shackles that you may be wearing. That is not why he called you to be his child. 
He called you (laughs) to be set free. He called the prisoners to be set free, for the lame to walk and the blind to see, for us to walk in the fullness of life with him. You see, when we bear one another's burdens, it brings deliverance in our lives. The other thing it does is it recovers destiny. You know, God has saved us in order to bring glory to his name. And he wants you to live out your kingdom calling. And the last thing, it brings fulfillment. It brings fulfillment of the promises of God. I love that song that we sang. You know, I will, I will stand, I will live in the promises of God. Last week, it was Friday, and someone who's here um, sent me a text and said, can we pray for a little boy? One of our sister churches, the family was out camping, and a little boy, nine years old, went missing. And uh, the text said he's been missing since three o'clock yesterday. Can we pray as a church? So immediately jumped on our prayer chain you know, 25 folks who are passionate about praying, you know, for emergency situations. And, and a search party was called, and they were out looking for this little boy. And sadly, a few hours later, I got a, another text that said the search party has found his body. And Mary and I, we just cried like, you know, it was just, it was just so overwhelming. And all we could think about is that mom and that dad who took their kids, took their three kids camping that weekend and were planning for a beautiful time together. And their nine-year-old boy, their oldest boy, their oldest son, you know, came back in in a hearse. I I can't imagine being a dad and, and packing up my camping gear and putting everything in the car and and just feeling gutted and horrific and driving back to Cambridge where they were from and, 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 and having to comfort my wife and my two kids and, and try and lead my family through that. And I just thought, how do, I, how do we face that? And if you're going to help them carry that burden, how, what are you going to say when you go and you... And you, you sit down with them and, and you visit them and you take them a meal and, and, you know, what do you say? Do you just run away and avoid them? A lot of Christians do that. When other people get into trouble, they go, oh, not my problem. Let's let somebody else handle that. Happens way too much. Let me just tell you this. You don't have to say anything. What you have to do is you have to show up. You have to show up. You have to go to that door. You have to make that phone call. You have to offer that help. You have to be there. And you know what? Sometimes in life that is enough. And I just think, you know, even in a room this size of those listening online, sometimes, maybe today you just need to make a phone call. Maybe today instead of running out of the building, you need to stop and get a coffee and find someone to talk to. Maybe today you need to ask somebody, hey, could I meet you this week sometime for coffee? And, you know, we have one of those churches that if you ask somebody how they are doing, they'll probably tell you the truth. You know, well, my wife and I, we had a fight last night. Well, my kids, I almost dropped them off, you know, at the community center. Well, we're going through a tough time. If you're a teacher, you're counting the days when you're back at school, Mark uh, Strickland said something funny this morning. 
He said, you know, school is about to start when Costco brings its Christmas decor out for sale. <laughs> Listen, I, I really believe that God wants to encourage us. The Lord showed me this verse this week, and I really fell in love with it. It's a verse from Isaiah where the people of God are being oppressed. And the Lord said to them, And in that day his burden will depart from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be broken. And I believe that God wants to break some yokes. I believe that God wants to lift up some burdens. I believe God wants to call us to a place of action where we're involved in somebody's life to help them carry the burden. And if you're carrying a burden, sometimes that's the best thing that you can do is to jump in and help lift somebody else up. So this is what I'd like us to do. I'm going to ask the band to come. And I'm, going to, I'm just going to ask you to sit there and I want you to close your eyes. And what I'd like you to do is just kind of hold your palms out like this. You could just place them on your knees. Because we're going to pray for some people. And this is just a, a position of expression. Lifting someone up to prayer in the Lord. But if you close your eyes with me. And we would begin to pray for some others. You know, Lord... I pray that this would be a day where burdens are lifted. Father, by your spirit and the power that raised Jesus from the dead, we ask that freedom would come. So let's begin to pray for others to be lifted up. Father, would you break the yokes that are upon the necks of people and set them free. As your word says, and the yoke will be broken. And Father, we're going to believe that this is a day where yokes will be broken, where burdens will be lifted. And Lord, we pray for those who are struggling with financial freedom. We pray that you would open doors. We pray that opportunities would come. We pray that you would bring in all that they need, whether it be through others, through your church, or in miraculous ways that, that folks will just turn and say, this is the Lord. For those who are health challenges, Lord, we pray, let healing come. Let healing touch bodies. Let the power of the Spirit of God bring healing to those who are hurting physically. Father, for those who are doubting, for those who are on a roller coaster of faith, sometimes they're high with you, sometimes they're low with you, sometimes they feel close to you, sometimes they feel far from you. Lord, we pray that that roller coaster would stop and they would get out, they would open that gate and they would step into the halls of the living God with a Father who loves them who would know them. And Father, I just pray for breakthrough in that area. I pray that they would understand the, the love that you've lavished upon us, that we might be called the children of God and we would walk in that love and know that love. And so Father, I pray for those who are struggling with the question, does God really love me? Lord, breakthrough. Just hold them. Show them that you love them. Father, we pray for those who are caught in sin. We thank you that if we confess our sin, you are faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all iniquity. And so we ask from heaven's gate, let forgiveness flow. Let forgiveness flow and let freedom reign. That we know that you take sins that have been confessed and you take them and you throw them into the deepest part of the sea and you put a sign over it that says no fishing, no going back. Let freedom reign in this place. Let forgiveness flow. Let grace abound and be released in your church. 
May the love of God be overwhelming in this place. And the people that you're thinking about, lift them up right now to the Lord and ask God to let his grace flow upon them. Flow, Lord. Let the wind of your compassion flow in this place right now. We name that sister. We name that brother. We name that neighbor. We name that father. We name that that daughter. We name that relative. We name that spouse who are carrying that which is so heavy. And we say, Lord, come alongside them and may the mighty God who reigns lift them up. Lift burdens, we ask, whether they be financial, emotional, relational. We come after you and we implore you, God. These people, are, are, our palms are raised. We are asking you, Lord, we're lifting them up right now. And we're saying, come, come, let your grace abound. Let forgiveness flow. We carry these burdens to you now, Lord. And we ask that you would work in a miraculous and mighty way, a supernatural way for your glory and honor. Burdens are so heavy. So Spirit of God, we pray you would come into lives and into situations where burdens are crippling. So let me just turn to you today. Are you feeling helpless? Are you feeling like, I need a burden bearer? I need the living God to enter in. I need someone to lift me up and to carry this thing which weighs me down. Father, I pray now that yokes are broken. That these heavy chains are released and fall to the ground. Father, we pray. We pray that your will be done, that your kingdom comes on earth as it is in heaven, that we walk in freedom in Christ. I'm going to ask that we stand now. We're going to sing. I'm going to ask that we stand, but as you do, I'm going to ask you to raise your hands. I'm going to ask you to raise your hands with me. Raise your hands in thanksgiving to God, the one who bears our burdens, the one who sets us free, the one who makes a way, the one who does miracles, the one who brings healing, the one who gives rest for a weary soul. We thank you that you are a mighty God. We thank you that you are sovereign over the entire universe. We thank you that you care about every single thing in our lives. We thank you that you know every hair that is upon our heads. We thank you, the living God, the power of Christ in us for your glory, for your honor. We give you thanks for who you are. And we say, come, come, Lord Jesus. Come and have your way. Come, we're stopping right now. We're turning to you. And we're saying, come, come, have your way. Lift us up in the fullness of God so that we might know your greatness in our lives and we might profess your mighty ways to others. Come, we pray. Let's sing a song of praise. We trust in you, Lord. We magnify your name. Let's sing together.
about you, but I certainly sensed a palpable presence of the Lord uh, this morning. And if God has been speaking to your heart, and if you're thinking about burdens that you're bearing, and you want to talk to someone, or you're wondering, okay God, it's time for me to get going. How can I be a burden bearer for others? I just invite you to stick around and pray. I'll be up here myself. I know Jim will be around. We'd love to pray with you about those things. We'd love to talk to you about those things. But allow me to pray for us as we leave today. Father God, as we live in the truth that you, Jesus, are the ultimate burden bearer, God, may we be given opportunities to bear one another's burdens. Lord, may we have names brought to our mind of people whose burdens we can bear. May we be given the opportunity to bear them, Lord, and may we have the strength and courage to say yes when that opportunity comes this week. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Go with the peace of God.